The next program we're going to talk about is my favorite program, the compilation program. The compilation program is the program that lets you do very complex deals very easily. First, my definition of a complex deal. Any deal that requires multiple tenants, multiple time periods, multiple leases, or multiple pieces of space. As an example, suppose we were going to do a complex expansion option. In other words, today I'm taking initial space of 10,000 square feet starting 7104 going through 630 2014. I'm also committing to some expansion space that's going to be delivered on November 1st of 06 and be coterminous with my initial piece of space. The way you do this deal in ProCalc is you do two separate cash flows, one for the initial space, one for the expansion space. Now I got two pieces of paper. Nowhere are the numbers summed up and nowhere do I have discounted numbers all back to today. That's what the compilation program does. It lets me combine multiple cash flows to create one scenario. Wait till you see how easy this is. On the main menu, the last program is the compilation program. Click this button to go into it. Once you get into it, it takes you right to the top of the data entry form. All you need to do is add the names of the files that you want to compile. Don't try to type the names of the files in. Use the Get File buttons to enter the file names. Click on Get File Number 1, and it takes you to a list of all the files. We're going to start with the test file. Double click on it. Get File Number 2, we're going to go to Test Compile 2. Double click on it. Get file number three, we're going to go to test compile three, double click on it. Now this is a complex expansion option where we're taking down space at three different times. So I did each piece of space as a separate cash flow. This is my initial piece of space, my first expansion, and my second expansion option. We need to add the three of these files together. Click here to continue. Set the add and subtract order. I click this button and it brings up the determining the order of addition and subtraction window. You'll see it says deal one plus deal two plus deal three. The default is that it adds them all together, but you can change the order of addition and subtraction by using these buttons right here. For example, what if your first deal was your remaining liability and you were going to sublease the space to two different subtenants? Then you would want to subtract them. Remaining liability minus subtenant one minus subtenant two. What if the first deal was my remaining liability, the second deal was my subtenant income, the third deal was my cost to go out and lease new space? Then I would want to say remaining liability minus the subtenant income plus my cost to go out and lease new space. You can add or subtract deals in any order you want. The default is to add them all up. That's what I'm going to do now because this is an expansion option where we're taking down space at three different times. I click OK. Click here to start the compilation. I click this button, it takes a couple of seconds to compile the information, and you're done. Now before I show you this compiled cash flow, I want to show you what this program actually did. I'm going to click on Go To and go to the Compiled Monthly Projections. In the few seconds it took to compile this, what it did is it went out and it figured out the earliest start date of all the deals and the latest expiration date of all the deals, and it set up one monthly stream of dates based on those two dates. Then it imported the monthly cash flows from all of the deals and put every month's cost in its proper time slot. So this first deal started on 6106. The second deal didn't start until 12107. The third deal doesn't start until 1109. It put every month's cost in its proper time slot. Then, if you move over to the right, you'll see there's a column that says monthly total. This is the column that follows the order of addition and subtraction. We took three separate deals, we told them to add it all together, it now, we now have one new monthly cash flow. The next column recalculates the present value all back to the earliest start date. So what I'm saying is that even though the money in the second deal, for example, doesn't start until 12107, when it gets over here, it's being discounted all the way back to the earliest start date, 6106. Now, when I go over to my compiled cash flow, you can clearly see we have 10,000 square feet starting 6106, 8,654 square feet starting 12107, 5,000 square feet starting 1109. You can clearly see we have staggered start dates. We're adding all of these deals together. And if I looked at year three when I went down, you'll see it gives me totals in every year for how much I'm actually paying. And down below, here's totals for the entire deal as if this was all one monthly cash flow all discounted back to the earliest start date. So as a default, the compilation program does not calculate per square foot totals because nine times out of 10 when you're using the compilation program, you're going to be mixing and matching different square footages and it's going to be changing midterm. 
Once you change the square footage midterm, you cannot calculate the cost per square foot. It's not a pro -count thing, it's just a mathematical thing. It's physically impossible to do it. However, there are times when you can use the compilation program and you will be able to get per square foot totals. Let me show you how to get per square foot totals in the compilation program. As you can see in the total section, we don't have any per square foot totals. If you wanted to calculate per square foot totals, click on Go To and click on Data Entry for Square Feet. That's going to take me to a little box right next to the total section. I can put in a rentable area right here, and you'll see that I'll get per rentable square foot totals in every year, and down here I can get rentable square foot average and rentable square foot net effective rental rates. If you wanted to put in a usable area here, you could get usable square foot totals as well. So let me give you some other examples of when you're going to use the compilation program. Let's talk about subleasing space. Maybe we're going to sublease space to one subtenant. So you're going to do one file for your remaining liability, you're going to do a separate file for your subtenant income, Take the remaining liability, subtract the subtenant income, it comes up with your new liability. Maybe we're going to sublease to multiple subtenants. In other words, I'm going to do one remaining liability cash flow for, let's say, 40,000 square feet, and then I'm going to subdivide that 40,000 feet into three different subtenants, all starting on different dates with different base years, free rents, TIs, commissions. So I do a total of four different files. Take the remaining liability, subtract subtenant 1 minus subtenant 2 minus subtenant 3 gives me a new remaining liability. Maybe you're going to sublease your space, then go out and buy a building. So I'm going to calculate my remaining liability minus two different subtenants, then I'm going to add the cost to buy a new building, and I'm going to get my total new obligation. Maybe I'm going to take the remaining liability of multiple leases. So I have lease number one plus lease number two plus lease number three gives me my total remaining liability of all three leases. Maybe you have mixed use space. For example, you have 20,000 square feet of office space and 7,000 feet of retail space and 3,000 square feet of basement storage space, all in the same building. Do three separate cash flows, add them all up, and you've got your total remaining obligation. Anytime you have multiple tenants, multiple leases, multiple time periods, or multiple pieces of space, you just break it down into a couple of simple basic cash flows and then use the compilation program to add or subtract them from one another to create the entire scenario. Now, how cool is that?